Thanks, Sean. He added five more years to my life with MPARS. Okay. Um, we, uh, all of the speakers here actually challenge tradition. So today we challenge tradition instead of ladies first is ladies last. But jokes aside, the, the reason why I'm last is because um, all the speakers had such wonderful experiences of what they did, what they are doing to biodiversity. And so the key thing, my role here is to say, how do you measure, how do we evaluate what you are doing? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Is it giving you the results you have? Yeah. So um, just quick reminder, Rio Plus 20 just ended on the 22nd of June. It seemed like just yesterday, you know, that um, we actually negotiated the text for the 2010 biodiversity targets, which reads to achieve by 2010, a significant reduction of the current rate of um, biodiversity lost at the global, regional, and national level. Um, even before 20, oh, somebody did the work for me, good. Um, slides. Um, even before 2010, the assessment was that nations would not meet that target. But it was obvious that there were different trends set by cities because as you've heard all those wonderful stories, wonderful things, not only today but yesterday, um, that cities were doing so much on sustainability, greenery and biodiversity conservation. There is this disjunct there, what, what is it, why? So, and European cities are all vying to be um, biodiversity capitals, American cities want to be biophilic. Um, so we felt that the only way to try and resolve this discrepancy was to actually find a way of actually measuring it quantitatively, the status of biodiversity. And we searched around for a tool and we couldn't in 2008. All we could find was a World Economic Forum Environmental Sustainability and Performance Indices, but these were for countries, but not for cities. And therefore, um, Singapore, being very pragmatic, initiated this development of an evaluation tool for cities to actually monitor and evaluate the biodiversity conservation. Okay, just quick scroll on some of the landmarks uh, development. Um, so 2008, we actually announced that we were going to, Singapore was going to help, and that was in the uh, COP6 conference of the parties, a sixth meeting. And 2009, we held the first um, uh, technical workshop. And there what happened was that the meeting actually de drew up a framework and selected indicators. The key thing was that we felt that there were many people who couldn't attend the workshop and therefore we um, uh, developed or wrote a user's manual. And that user's manual is like an idiot's guide to the CBI. And what was important was that in this project or in this initiative, the key thing was that there was sharing, sharing of experiences, very important. Then at the second expert workshop in 2010, the indicators were refined. And again, the next important thing in this initiative was that the engagement of cities. Cities were empowered. They then came back to us and say, what were the things that were right or wrong with the indicators? And so we then fine-tuned it. And in in 2010, at COP10, as Dr. Leong had mentioned, there was a landmark decision, and this was the first time, and I think uh, um, um, other people too have mentioned that 2010 was crucial because it was the first time that the CBD recognized the role of cities. And, and again, now in Rio 20, uh, sustainable cities is a major issue in the Rio Plus 20 document. In the third workshop last year, we finalized the um, indicators. And, and interestingly enough, at the same time, um, Professor Tim Beatley wrote his biophilic book. And um, by the time I read to chapter three and I saw his indicators, I thought, my goodness, um, his indicators were so similar to what we were doing. So there was definitely synergy in things that we're doing around the world, that cities were coming you know, to the fore. As of 15 June 2010, more than 50 cities are in various stages of actually uh, applying the uh, Singapore Index. 
cities have actually called us up and said, well, we can't, we, we can't do all the indicators. We, we don't have data for indicators. Can we still join in this project? And we say, of course, because each of us are going at a different pace. And, and, and while they, are, they have data, the, the fact that these indicators show the importance of what is needed for biodiversity conservation, they can then start collecting data that are relevant. And does this work? Can this work? And it does, because more than 30 cities have actually uh, tested it, and they have um, shown that all the indicators uh, are, are relevant, and you can get data for it. So it's not something that's really difficult. Um, this map shows um, uh, the spread of the, the different cities that have actually um, uh, test bedded the um, index. And it's obvious that there are geographical you know, uh, gaps, but we hope that amongst the audience here, there will be cities who will come up to us and say that, yes, we would like to, you know, partake in this um, uh, initiative. For the benefit of those who are not familiar with the Singapore Index, I'll just give a brief introduction to the structure and indicators. This, um, I'm just trying to use the pointer here. Yeah. So, never mind. So, the two parts to uh, the index. The first part is the profile of the city. Thank you. The first is the profile of the city. And here it gives a snapshot of what the city is, where it's situated, how big is it, is it small or small, or big city, is it uh, located in the temperate or tropical uh, part of the world. The second part, actually the quantitative part, and we, we were quite um, uh, uh, adamant that we should actually have quantitative figures because um, when we were at the first workshop, uh, people were saying that we should use the traffic light system. And we felt that the traffic light system, well, I think is, we're doing better, or, or I think, I feel we are doing worse. Uh, we felt that uh, to be scientifically credible, we wanted quantitative data, which is the reason why we have a scoring system for uh, the indicators um, from zero to four. The three components of the index are, first, the question is, what biodiversity do you have native biodiversity in the city? And we have 10 indicators. And then the second is, if you have biodiversity in the city, what ecosystem services do they provide? And we have four indicators. And third, if you have good biodiversity in the city and, you, and they provide ecosystem services, what are you doing about it, which are the governance and management of biodiversity in the city? So very quickly, I'm going to highlight some of the indicators. For example, um, for bio native biodiversity in the city, I'm going to just bring in um, indicator one measures the um, natural areas in the city. And natural areas are the ones who harbor most biodiversity, and which that's the reason why we want to measure it. Now, again, one of the key principles in this, um, when we selected the uh, indicators, was that we didn't want uh, to measure things that were beyond our control, like how many extinct species you have, simply because it was beyond our control. So what we wanted to do was to take a positive step, and that is to measure the change in number of native species, which means that you have a positive slant to it. What are you doing to actually reintroduce extinct species? What are you doing to actually improve the biodiversity status? Are you doing more surveys? Like in Singapore, we actually found 100 and 50 new species of flies. Yes, they're not just for swapping, but it's, it's quite amazing that you've got new species of flies um, to science. So, so there is lots of biodiversity here, but you need to actually go and survey. This, the next group of indicators are actually ecosystem services. And uh, 
I'm going to just highlight one of them, and that is the um, uh, indicator 12, which actually measures canopy cover. Because if you've got good canopy cover, what you do is you basically you, you, you have all the advantages of uh, trees, uh, carbon sequestration. It helps to reduce um, uh, your temperature. Uh, it um, absorbs your particulate um, uh, helps settle particulate pollution. So quite a range of uh, uh, good things. So we, that was the reason why we selected indicator 12 as canopy cover. And the third set of indicators are actually governance and management of biodiversity. And one of the important ones is actually uh, institutional capacity because you can't actually, um, you know, try and do biodiversity conservation without the in appropriate institutional setup. And the other thing is actually partnership and, and participation. Yeah, I can see Sean getting a little bit nervous there. Okay, time, next. <laughs> so the, the three versions were, three versions of the user's manual were uh, uh, developed. And all the time we are mindful that we want useful, friendly calculations, scientific credibility, and consultative refinement. And Quick results, because we just got um, the cities to, to, to come back to us on the 15th of June. So what we found was that um, um, more cities could provide uh, the following data, which are basically mostly the ones on native biodiversity. So what is sadly lacking are actually this on ecosystem services. So again, Doing this actually gives us a diagnostic tool on what are the information we really lack and what is it that we want to uh, measure. Now, um, I'll just quickly quote to you uh, two... Um, okay, just one more thing. The, the thing is that originally... Oh no, we have this here. Uh, sorry, yeah. Some of the things that we have is that um, the, the latest progress is that the user's manual has been translated into German, French, and Japanese. And I think it's in the process of being translated into Portuguese and Chinese. So it's really spreading and more and more cities want to partake and so they want it translated. And we find that <clears throat> use, it used to be just city officials doing it, but now we have uh, graduate students, we have NGOs, all contributing data. So city officials, uh, you're not alone because there are lots of people out there to help you. Okay, <clears throat> two quotes from people who have used the index. Um, Ms. Martet Gressels said that for the past 20 years, she is from Brussels. She has been look, we have been looking into biodiversity, so we have a lot of data on it. But it showed that it lacked precise data on how many programs and visits to nature areas that we have, which is part of the ecosystem component. So what she's doing now is to collect much more of that data. And Mr. Grant Purcell from Edmonton said that he attributed Edmonton's and Montreal's perfect score of 10 for biodiversity monitoring in the corporate nights study on good sustainable practices in Canadian cities to their participation in the Singapore Index. We hope that more cities will join us on the journey towards becoming a biophilic city so that our quality of life and health will improve with development. Thank you.